Hi. Recording. Can you can you launch the poll? Remember, we were, we're going to have a very brief poll. Can I, we... I don't know how to do that. Okay, I can launch that. Okay. okay. Eh? Exactly. But you must submit proof. Nanga sig. Hi everyone, I'm Patricia Langen. I'm the regional director with uh, We Connect International. I'm based in Washington, DC. Today, uh, we have our first ever event with AstraZeneca for Africa. Uh, AstraZeneca will be presenting themselves so you can learn more about them as a corporation. And I'll pass it on now to Yeshua Russell who is our country director in Nigeria for We Connect International, and he will be the moderator today. Uh, but before I do, I am gonna ask if any of you are not yet part of our WE community, we encourage you to please go to our website and register yourselves. It's free, no cost, and it takes less than 10 minutes. So I'm going to pass it off now to Yeshua Russell. Thank you. Thank you very much, Patricia. Welcome everybody to this unique virtual training titled Adopting an Agile Mindset. Thank you very, very much, everybody, for registering and for um, joining right now. We'd like to thank um, Patricia our regional director for all, all her work towards getting this um, event on the ground. Um, I would like to also quickly welcome, um, can you hear me clearly everyone? Yes. Fantastic. So I would like to welcome uh, um, two very expert speakers we have today. We have two very expert speakers from AstraZeneca and we're very honored that um, they could make this, um, uh, take time out to be on this um, virtual training. We have um, Barbara Nell, who's the country president, um, African cluster AstraZeneca. Um, she, she's very, very experienced. Um, she has global exposure when it comes to um, leadership, organizational management, and she acts as the uh, president for the African cluster, powering potential across South Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, and French-speaking Africa. I don't think there's much, there's anything left outside outside that in Africa. You know, so we will welcome you, Barbara Nell, to this virtual training as one of our key speakers. We also would like to welcome Smita Novotha to this um, virtual training. Now, Smita is, a, is the um, HR director, so, uh, South Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa at AstraZeneca. She has had experiences in, experience in managing corporations with over 50,000 um, um, personnel. And we're very happy that they could both join this meeting, this uh, virtual training. I believe um, Danielle, also from AstraZeneca, is on this, um, is on, is on this um, on this meeting and we're very happy to have her on here. I will, due to time constraints, I will immediately hand over to um, Smita to make um, a, a brief presentation as regards um, AstraZeneca. Thanks, Yeshua. Um, hi everyone, I'm Smita. I'm actually gonna hand over to Barbara who will just take you through a little bit about AstraZeneca and I will dive right into the topics. Thanks very much, everyone. Um, yes, so when Smita asked me uh, a couple of weeks ago if we could um, if we could have this partnership with WeConnect and run a session like this, um, it wasn't difficult for me to decide to say yes. So I'm really looking forward to today. Um, I appreciate um, that the the business 
scenarios between what you might be working in and what we are working in as a, as a bigger corporation um, is different. Um, but at the same time, I think still what everybody's managing at the moment, there's so much um, similarities. And I think from that perspective, um, it will be easy for us, I think, to, to work together. And I'm really looking forward to, um, to this, um, to this um, session. Um, so Smita, if we can move to the, to the first slide. So many of you might be sitting there and thinking, who is AstraZeneca? You know, what, what is our business? So we are a pharmaceutical company. We make medicine for diseases um, such as asthma, such as diabetes, for cancer. And at the moment, actually, um, in terms of COVID-19, we're also working very actively on um, collaborating with the University of Oxford, for instance, for a vaccine development. Now, um, um, Yeshua very kindly sort of did an introduction. And um, so for us, when we talk about the African cluster, we are essentially talking about, well, we divide it into four regions. So um, French speaking Africa, East Africa, Southern Africa, then there's South Africa, and then very importantly for us is West Africa. Obviously, with um, Samita, sorry, I've lost the slides. Okay, no, sorry, they're back. With very much then a focus on Nigeria as well. Um, we have, we also do a lot of patient centric uh, programs. So in Nigeria, for instance, we have a Red Cross partnership. We're in some of the um, conflict areas where we are supporting some of the clinics, etc. And then we have what we call legal entities. So we, we have an AstraZeneca legal entity here in South Africa. So I'm based here out of Johannesburg, but also in Nigeria and Kenya. And for us, um, Nigeria um, remains a very, very key market um, to our business, as does the rest of um, um, the, you know, the whole cluster. And across um, Africa, we are working with about 35 distributors so these are distributors that's helping us to get our medicine um, from their distribution hub into the hospitals, into the pharmacies, you know, where the medication is being distributed. Um, some of you might have heard on the right hand, left hand side of the slide, you'll see that they are referring to Healthy Heart Africa. So this is one of our corporate social responsibility projects that we are running. Um, it's running in countries like Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Ethiopia, and, and Ghana. And this is essentially where we are working with the different uh, ministries of health to do screening for patients with high blood pressure and hypertension. So this is in many of the areas going into some of the poorest areas of the countries and helping individuals there um, to, um, to identify when they might have um, issues and challenges with something like blood pressure. So once again, many of you on the call might look at this and say, sure, it's, a, it's quite a specialized you know, area that we're working in medicine. Um, but I can tell you, I think the, the, the topic that we are going to be covering today, and Smita, if we maybe move to the next slide, um, I think applies whether you are a small, a small startup company, whether you have a, a small business or whether you are a, a company like us that is part of a global organization. Um, and this is really this piece around the agile mindset. I think, I think in a way, even um, having real agility, sort of speed, the ability to quickly adapt and change, I think is even easier. I think sometimes the smaller the organization is. Sometimes in large organizations such as ourselves, you have to often jump through a lot of hoops to get um, approval for many things, etc. So what we did um, as a company, as part of the COVID-19 pandemic, and as part of that continues to evolve, very often the business leader, so all of us on this call, um, that role becomes even more important. And, and, and I will, I think a lot of what I will share today will also be my personal experience. You know, there is no book at the moment that can tell us to say, listen, when you are going through, you know, a pandemic such as this, what should you do and how should you drive some of your business decisions? Sometimes it is just working with your team um, or sometimes just applying good common sense in terms of some of the decisions that you need to help. There's a lot of uncertainty 
And I think what we want to do this workshop is really um, to share some tips and some guidance on what business owners and managers can do. I think to start with yourself first, we often talk about you've got to put your own oxygen mask on first. If you think of the, you know, on the, you know, when you're flying, what they say, you know, in time of crisis, get your oxygen mask on first before you help others. Um, and it's, it's just this whole process of managing through the uncertainty, how you need to manage your team. And then I think very much while we are dealing with this crisis now is how do we also try and continue to look ahead um, to the future. It's not easy. I think all of us on this call have probably felt it. You know, I've definitely felt some days much more emotionally drained uh, just because of some of the discussions that you are having with people. At the same time, there's much more volatility and uncertainty in terms of business and things sometimes change overnight, you know, from you thinking that this is the way it will work and then a week later, it's completely different. And I think all of that, it's, it's really this piece around agility, the ability to, to change, to, to try something new. And if it fails, you fail fast and you can then move on to how you can try something maybe in a different way for the business as well. Okay, so if we move to the next slide, um, it's this whole piece around um, successful change management. I think the challenge sometimes with COVID-19 is it's not, this is not change management like before, where maybe you are changing, you know, maybe the person that you are, some of the people that you are doing business with, or you've got new customers that you've got on board. This is almost continuous change management. Because even from, if I think here in South Africa, from where we were maybe um, two months ago to where we were a month ago to where we are now, you know, each of those steps require change management. So this just goes through a little bit what is needed. So I think active um, and, and having visible executive sponsorship. So you as the business leader need to really know that you are a little bit under the microscope. People are looking to you to see how you behave and how you, how you manage yourself as well in this process. Very important as well is, is to have, to look at dedicated change resources. And with resources, we're not necessarily talking about money um, and, and more people. It's sometimes just time. It's creating time that you can sit down and think and reflect in terms of where people that is working for you, where they are at. Because sometimes as a leader, you might be two, three steps ahead of them, but you need to take the rest of your group and your team through that as well. Having a structured um, change management framework. So here we're not talking about something complex, but just to think through what are the three or four key things that we need to deliver on. And then I think something that I think in a, in a situation like this, I don't think you can ever over communicate. It's constant and open communication. It's about putting your hand up to say, listen, I don't know the, I don't know the answer to this, but actually if we sit together and we talk about it, we can probably find a solution that can work for everybody. And then employee engagement. Um, you know, my team in South Africa have often heard me use the phrase to say, we need to know the good, the bad and the ugly. So tell us, tell us, tell us how you are feeling at the moment. Tell us what is not working uh, when you are dealing with customers to tell us, you know, you know, for instance, for us, people like pharmacy chains, hospital groups, uh, clinicians that's treating patients. It's very important for us to understand what is currently happening, how patients are still trying to access healthcare. And some of the messages in there is not necessarily what we want to hear. Patients are scared to go to hospitals. They don't want to go to cancer centers at the moment to be treated for, for, for their cancer. Um, and this is maybe not messages that we want to know. But if you, if you have that engagement, then you know. You know what you are up against, what are the challenges. But I think also very importantly in this, in this time period is also what people are feeling. Um, you know, I've definitely found in the last couple of weeks, I've had much more personal conversations with people also around their family situations. And that maybe before you wouldn't, you wouldn't have had, because I think at the moment, those lines are getting quite blurred for many people. Um, 
you know, and then I think, you know, looking at project resources and then business and, and, and management engagement. So other people within your group as well to make sure that they are also fully engaged and aligned to what needs to happen. And if we can do this well, then obviously what we will get from this is, you know, the business results that, you know, the change manager will be, will be done well, reduce resistance. And I think this is often what I talk about is the, 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 the energy in the organization. Is it moving forward or is there a little bit of sideways energy where people, you know, don't feel as focused as they should be? Um, and then, you know, the early change adoption. So if people can really buy into what you are proposing in terms of what needs to change and how it needs to happen, that will then also make, make life easier and smoother for you. So if we move to the next slide. So this just talks through um, specifically looking at a crisis like what we are facing now. Um, some of the, some of the, the key steps and, you know, I think it's important that we have regular sense checks in terms of where we are. So preparation, and I think this is the one thing I think that's happened with all of us. I've definitely felt it as well that, you know, this was something that was happening in China, it was quite far away. And then the next minute it was on our doorstep and people had to start to work remotely and, you know, supply of, um, you know, couldn't get into the countries because of the changes with flights and all of these changes. So. But still, despite that, that I think we all felt that it happened so soon is to still ensure that you get the basics right first. Um, you know, you've got to set yourself um, up um, as effectively as possible. You also need to think about your own mind, mindset and the environment and well-being. OK, and then you can help. Then you can really help to do the team the same. The connection is so important. Um, you know, um, when you are talking to people, what they are, you need to understand the concerns, the uncertainties that they have, and that people feel that they've been listened to and that they are supported. And then I think it's this piece around leading, you know, the refocus that needs to come, the reevaluate and the re-engage, and it's a continuous cycle. So we've definitely seen in our organization, I would say we've gone through, I would call a, a very reactive phase, where I think we, most of our interactions were done face to face. Our sales trips will go out and see the doctors and the hospitals face to face. Now suddenly they are all working remotely. So how do we need to equip them with the right, you know, kits and equipment that they can use it. So that for instance is a huge change that people need to see. So these changes have happened, but now we need to also focus a little bit more on the longer term. How do we create now the longer term vision of where we want to be next year, etc. And then I think it's creating this environment where despite all of these challenges and despite the crisis is that we can really build capability for a bright future. And I think give people hope, but give them realistic hope. You know, if there are challenges and concerns in the business, you know, my view has always been you need to share that openly with people so that everybody has um, is connected to the to the collective view. Okay. If we move to the next slide. So now if we look at specifically this piece around getting the basics right first. Um, you know, for you as an individual, uh, how do you prepare your space where you work from? You know, maybe you can't be in the office anymore. Uh, you know, maybe you need to, you've, you've had to move from home and your, 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 your colleagues are also working from home. What does that look like? Then I think there's this piece around the boundaries and connections, you know, for yourself and for others, especially when you're working remotely. And I've heard this many times in our organization where people will say, well, you know, some, somebody might be sitting in the, in the living room, there's a table there where they might be working from at the moment. You know, how do you distinguish between home life and work life? Not very, very easy. And then I think something that's very, very important is how do you set realistic goals and really break it down to say, okay, in that first week or the second week, you know, how do we break that down? And even now we, for instance, some other countries in Africa are starting to come out of some of the lockdowns. What do we need to do to break down and make sure that we, we set ourselves and our teams up for, for success? To discuss their expectations so you know where they are coming from and where you are coming from. And through that to really empower them. Okay, if we move to the next slide. So once again, five ways as a leader to lead through a crisis. And, and once again here, 
you know, I'm fortunate that I have a team, you know, I've got my senior leadership team that's working with me on this. And I'm very fortunate that I've got, you know, really, really strong um, leaders in those positions as well. I think um, be open. If you don't know, you don't know, you know, put your hand up and, 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 and be frank about that. You know, if you don't know, I, I can't tell people where exactly we will be in this situation in two months time, but we have a pretty good idea of what things will be like for the next two to two, two, two to three weeks. Um, you know, and I think any confusion, um, um, you know, um, heightens, you know, just misunderstandings that people might have. Um, I think also in terms of being open is start with the facts first, but at the same time, you need to acknowledge people's feelings. And I think empathy um, in this process is so important. I definitely know um, at times it's not always easy. I've definitely had days in the last, you know, couple of weeks where my empathy has also run thin where I would sometimes think that, you know, what about me? You know, because it, it gets quite draining from time to time, you know, because people need a lot of reassurance at the moment. And then I think this piece around standing tall, sometimes you will have to make the tough decisions. So I'll give you an example. Um, here in South Africa, we started to open up for some of our sales force that they could start partially going back and doing face-to-face -face interactions with customers again. And people were, they were cautious about it, but many of them were quite happy about that. It's a little bit going back to what they've done before. But we have certain regions here in South Africa where our caseload for COVID-19 is very high. And we just had to make the decision to say in the Western Cape and the Eastern Cape at the moment, no, it's off the table. We are not doing that. And not everybody was necessarily happy with that decision, but we could back it up by clear evidence to say, listen, guys, you know, it is about your safety. That's what we put first. So I think that decisiveness in the decision is, is very important. Um, giving reasons to believe. Um, you know, if I think if anything, um, we need to be overly, overly sensitive to sometimes the effort that people are putting in at the moment um, to deliver their work. So I think this is where to, to tell people and to acknowledge them for the great work that they have done is so important. Um, and you know also that people are working under a lot of strain and stress at the moment so if things don't exactly work out as they should it's okay that's okay too if some days people are functioning at 60 percent rather than 100 percent that's okay too and then i think the other very important thing is to walk the walk um, so one example there as well is you know we've, we've partially opened our offices here in johannesburg you know me as the leader i'm here you know, I'm working with the team, you know, I can't, I can't say one thing and do something else. And then I think it's this, um, this piece around articulating your own feelings um, in terms of how you feel. So it's about acknowledging that there are things that I'm very worried about. You know, I've got a dad of 91. I'm worried about his health and his safety at the moment. Um, you know, I'm worried about my kids and my family. Now, once again, that's maybe very small in comparison to maybe the issues and challenges that other people have. But I still think it is really important that people hear that. Okay. So the next slide. Um, just if we, if we maybe just have the build in terms of, you know, sort of the business rapid um, crisis response. From a team, health and safety remains absolutely critical and to ensure that there is very clear guidance around that, what needs to happen. You know, the business strength, um, as much as you can, you know, to look at the finances, what you can do there, um, you know, and, and adapting also resources or where you maybe need to cut, um, you know, in terms of, you know, maybe the scope of what you can reach at the moment. Building financial resilience, you know, cost discipline is so important. Reviewing the financial plan, what is happening on the top line in terms of the revenue coming in, what is the cost base and how you need to manage that and maybe creative solutions around how you can manage that in the short term before the business um, returns to, to what it was before. And then I think the execution clarity in terms of working with your team, coordinating, scaling responses and planning accordingly is, is all very, very important in this, in this time period. If we move to the next slide, this is just talking a little bit around conflicting um, um, priorities um, because, um, you know, sometimes we need to really work on how we schedule the work effectively. 
also how we never navigate and negotiate deadlines in terms of you know what the team needs to do because they might also have to be looking after their family etc managing expectations and then i think this piece around always remaining professional as i say in, in a period like this i think as a leader there's two two words that i think is so important is being calm still showing your emotions but being calm and I think the other thing is this piece around agility. So the ability to move fast and make decisions decisively and move on from them. And then the other thing is about being flexible, listening to your people. Sometimes you might have one idea, um, but the, the team that's maybe working with you might have slightly um, different ideas. Um, because once again, there's conflicting demands. Here in South Africa, the schools are not yet open. So how do we deal in the organization with people who are currently homeschooling their children? You know, how do we manage around that? You know, give them the space, but still ensure that the work gets done. So I think it's all those factors that I think are good examples of how we need to we need to manage this. Okay. And I think with that, Smita, I think I'm handing over back to you. Yes, thank you, Barbara. Um, so as Barbara said, it's really, really important that from a from a leadership perspective that we are agile and flexible in, in how we manage the situation, how we manage our mindset and our teams. Um, and, and this is what the business needs so that we can adapt and change um, according to the environment. The flexibility is more on the operational side of things. Um, you know, making sure you have a flexible team, have those discussions with them, um, prepare them to deal with unexpected change, and um, the agility side is more around the planning, um, you know, your, your project management skills, um, strategies that, that you can put in place, sort of your plan Bs, plan Cs in case of change. Um, that's really important. You need to be agile. You need to plan ahead um, so that when there is a change, whatever change it might be, that you have um, something to rely on to move forward with your teams. So very quickly, um, we always talk about an agile mindset, and it's not just one approach or attitude. It's actually made up of various different um, sort of concepts um, that will help you adapt to change quicker and, and easily as well. So the first one is the perspective, and this is a little bit what Barbara spoke about as well. It's about looking at the bigger picture, um, understanding what your vision is for your business and your employees, and where do you want to go? And with that, then you can look at the resilience and the grit. So, you know, how do we accept um, the changing requirements? How do we build um, our employees' courage? Um, how do we achieve um, what, whatever we've set out in terms of perspective. So those are important bits that we need to uh, focus on. And then there's a growth mindset. So understanding that, like Barbara said earlier, you know, sometimes 60% is good enough. So, you know, it's not always perfection that we need to go for, but more quality, more outcomes. Um, and that's really important. Also owning your attitude. Um, it's important that we um, understand what we want from our teams, from our business, and, th and that we, we own it, we, we understand it, and we, we take responsibility for it. And then the Kaizen mindset. It talks about knowing what you need to deliver to your customer. It talks about being transparent, um, to, to always look for continuous improvement, um, and always manage or make sure your teams can manage themselves. And then there's the outward mindset. This is where um, you see yourself through others' eyes. How does your suppliers, how do your service providers, um, how do your employees see you? You know, what is it, what do you look like from the outside? I think that's also important, um, not to always be inwardly focused, but also focus on the external. And then have conversations. That's really important, be it external or internal. Like we said earlier, the constant communication and open engagement, it's really important to build um, the resilience for the change.
With that being said, building empathy is sort of the first step when dealing with employees. So you need to remember that empathy is not just agreeing or disagreeing with uh, someone. It is just understanding where they're coming from and why are they feeling the way they are feeling. It's, um, it's where we avoid making assumptions about a situation or our employees, but more about just understanding them. And in order to build empathy, we always need to ask more questions. The only way we can learn is by asking questions. And um, the only way people will learn to trust us is when they feel like they can speak to us. So by asking questions, um, it allows us to learn from them and allows them to speak up to us and let us know how they're feeling. Active listening goes in with asking questions. It's pointless us asking a question but not listening to what our, our suppliers are saying or what our employees are saying or what our service providers are saying. It's really important to listen to what they are saying and how they are saying it, um, you know, and, and repeat what they say to, un to make sure you understand what they've said to you. It's really, really important to build um, your acknowledgements. So allow people to understand that you are trying to understand them and that um, you are aware of their emotions. You don't judge, you don't um, sort of sympathize or pity them, but more understand and, and accept what they are um, showing you and how they are feeling and how you um, are accepting that from them. By building empathy, it allows you to have more honest conversations, be it your employees, be it your suppliers. Um, it's really, really important that you, your customers, your employees, your suppliers, et cetera, whoever you're engaging with, understand that you can empathize with them and their situation, and then they would do the same for you. So um, Yeshua, I think this is where I hand over to you for the case studies. Um, thank you very much. Svita and Barbara, thank you very, very much. Um, I, I think that was, that was just fantastic. I was an MBA in Agile. Thank you very, very much. Um, before we go into the uh, case studies, we have a few questions that popped up, um, but I think um, Barbara has uh, adequately answered, ans answered that. Um, um, the major question was as regards the healthy, healthy heart uh, AstraZeneca's Healthy Heart um, project, um, Barbara has answered very uh, adequately that that's going to take place very soon, as well as other projects um, for, for Nigeria. And we're very excited that AstraZeneca is taking a huge interest in Nigeria and is going to be doing a lot of work in, in the region. And this particular virtual training is proof of that fact. Um, seeing that we do not have any more questions right now, I'm very certain everyone is waiting to jump into the case studies section, the breakout section. We're going, so I'll, I'll quickly um, explain um, explain the um, breakout sessions. We're having two breakout sessions, two breakout rooms. Um, the first room one is on organizational agility. We're going to be having Smita as the uh, subject matter expert in that room. And we'll also be having um, Fumi Ogwe, who is the CEO of Jack Riley, a um, consulting firm in Nigeria, as the WBE facilitator in that room. We'll also be having Chaelin from WeConnect as the uh, WeConnect um, support, to, um, providing basic support and taking notes in that, um, during that meeting during that breakout session, you will have a total, a maximum of 25 minutes to look at the case studies, the case study that's appointed, uh, given to your own group and to discuss and to come back. We would advise that the, um, in the course of that period, if you have any questions that has to do with the material, the technical material as, as regards agile mindset, you can ask the um, AstraZeneca expert that's going to be in that room with you for that particular group. That will be that will be sweeter. 
and then Umiogwe will take uh, leadership of that room to ensure that everyone contributes and then you come out with, uh, with a response to the task provided which would help us utilize what we've learned today immediately and have quick uh, quick results in our businesses. The second group is titled Agile Leadership. That is going to be, uh, that's the second group. We're going to have uh, Barbara Neil on that, in that group. Thank you very much, Barbara, and thank you, um, Smita, in that group. Um, the case study revolves around um, agile, leader, uh, agile leadership uh, situation, a company needing agile leadership to be introduced into, the, into, into, the, into its business. And so Barbara Neil acts as the um, subject matter expert. Um, we have Tolu Olaya, who is the CEO of Greens Wealth Corporate Services Limited as the um, certified woman on business facilitator in that group. And we have Erin Dennis from uh, WeConnect as the WeConnect support to help with uh, notes and time management and things like that. The same thing, if you have any questions that relates to the subject material, you, you ask the questions. The, um, um, the groups, you have exactly 25 minutes to go start and to come up with your own um, response to the tasks that have been provided. Do we have any questions at all before we jump into that? Fantastic. So um, I would like to wish everybody, wanted to say something, Patricia? Okay. <laughs> so um, let's uh, we'll wish everybody good luck as we jump into that group. We've all been allocated into various groups, so you'll find you'll be automatically taken to that group. And when it ends, you'll be, you'll be, um, You'll be withdrawn. The group will come to a close. Uh, Smita, you wanted to say something? No, nothing from my side. Oh, okay. So the groups are declared open right now. Thank you very much. Uh, one thing uh, is don't hit the button in the lower right that says leave. <laughs> So Yeshua, um, I've been assigned to the Agile Leadership Group, but I think I need to be in the other one. Or oh, is that is that the is um I'm, I did, I'm doing with the Agile Leadership and uh, that's sorry sorry yeah, yeah, apologies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It looks there, like there are a few people who haven't been assigned yet. No, everyone's been assigned. Oh. If they have, every, everyone, well, from what I can see now, everyone has been assigned. It's so just taking them a minute to get to move. Okay. But they need to take me to, to click Good. to accept the button, but everyone has been assigned. So I think I cannot, I cannot move myself. So I, uh, I think you're the only one who can visit the the breakout groups to check that they're going okay. Oh, I, I am? Yeah, you're the only one who can visit. So if you could like okay. pop into them and make sure that they're okay. getting the assignment right, I think that's a good idea. Would you like me to... Um, and I'll stay here. Um, okay. And uh, we have one person, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, how, um, how, how, you haven't yet joined a group, uh, Jacqueline. Oh, she's supposed to hit the button to go into the group. Yeah, she was, yeah it, it, it brings up an invert, then you click it and you move into the group, so. Uh, okay, why don't you go in the group? I will check with her if she, if she. Okay. Ask me okay. a question.
Are they, um, do they understand the assignment? Uh, well, it looks like, it seems so. The, I, haven't, I, I just went into one group. I'm going to go into the other group now. Oh, okay. Why don't you go into yeah. the other group? Okay. And I'll just wait and see if anyone. Welcome back, everybody. We will restart once everyone's joined the plenary and uh, we've started the recording again. I, I think we've got everybody back. And we look forward to, um, I'm going to pass it over to Yeshua. Okay. Thank you very much, Patricia. We, yes, we have everybody, almost everybody's back right now. I, I hope you all had a very um, good time in the breakout sessions. Now, um, we'll be wrapping everything up completely in the next um, 20 minutes tops. We have 15 minutes for the presentations from the um, leaders of both groups. So how this goes is we'll give you about three, four minutes for group one, that's organizational agility to give us their feedback. And then we have five minutes to ask any questions. Then we give the next group, uh, group two, uh, agile leadership, three, four minutes to, to present, which will be presented by the W, the certified woman owned business that uh, facilitated that group. And then we give another four or five minutes for us to ask questions. And then we take closing remarks from um, um, uh, ba uh, Barbara and Smita, and then we wind down. Thank you very much. So with that, I'd like to immediately hand over to group one, Organizational Agility, to give us their feedback. Thank you very much. My, uh, thank you very much, Yesha. My name, yes, my name is Fumi Ogwe. We, we, in, my, in our group, we had um, around 10 points, but I'm going to just highlight the five you know, sort of most important ones. They really all, um, I don't know if any, every, anyone can hear me. They really all revolved around restructuring you know, so, um, you know, we talked about the need to, to, to look at your business and reconsider restructuring the way that, um, in, the, in the case study, the way that she was um, getting credit from her supply chain, the way that she was paying her employees and uh, potentially asking her customers to, to pay in advance, even if it wasn't completely everything. So there was a whole conversation around that. And then we talked about the importance of having um, open and honest conversations. You know, you know, it's almost sort of tugging on, on the empathy strings of, of uh, you know, everyone in the ecosystem. And then we we talked about also including family and friends, because sometimes they, 
um, are able to help with things like ideas or providing bridge financing. We talked about um, you know be, being you know quite close with the banks with your with a bank or with a financial the one that you've been banking with because we we discussed that around these times the banks are willing are willing to provide a lot of support to businesses so having you know open and honest conversation and good close relationships with the banks was something we talked about and then the final thing we said which i wanted to share is being part of a network like we connect who are you know similar going through similar things and you know posing a question and potentially having someone be able to take it up and help you and then sorry there was one more thing about government legislation there was a lot of legislation and somebody shared from south africa how there's a lot of legislation around supporting small businesses and that's also certainly the case in nigeria so those were really the main things we talked about and then the, yeah one more pivoting so diversifying the product line was something that we've also seen a lot of businesses are doing quite successfully and one that we 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 talked about thank you thank you very very much uh Fumi, and thank you very much for the, the, all the people all the ladies that were in one organizational agility thank you very very much we have like about three four minutes to open for any questions or any feedback well what while, while um, you're thinking I, okay. actually i i had a question um since um both groups didn't get to read uh, the case studies uh, for the other group. I wonder, Funmi, can you quickly uh, summarize what your case study was actually about? Ah, okay. So the case study was about a, a, a company owned by a, a lady called Yemi. And she had a factory where she was making children's clothing. Um, before COVID-19, she had five employees and she was making about 5 million Naira um, profit. So she was a pro profitable, profitable business. Um, however, because of COVID-19, she wasn't really getting any orders and her rent was um, eight, 800,000 Naira. So she couldn't really uh, uh, make it work. However, she then got an order for for um, uniforms, for children's uniforms. And the, issue, the, the difficulty was she couldn't finance it. She didn't have any cash flow. Mm. There was going to be profit on the uniforms, but she just couldn't finance it. And the profit was not enough to cover her overhead. So the, the, the point of the case study was what should she do? You know, how should she approach this? Um, because the large retail store wanted to purchase the things but she wouldn't receive payments for 60 days. They had a 60 day policy as most of these people do. Yeah. yeah. And she had been hesitant prior to now. She hadn't really taken out loans. She didn't have an accountant. So she didn't have proper books. And so she didn't have a structure in place to be able to go through a formal financial um, transaction where she would get a facility to, 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 to do the order. Mm. I see. I understand the point about the relationships with the banks. So um, that's why we were saying, you know, she had she had installed capacity. She could do something else with that fact. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for me. Thank you, uh, all the members of Group um, One Organizational Agility. A big thumbs up to you all. As we say in Nigeria, ten bosa. I guess the Nigerians will know what that is. <laughs> so um, let's quickly go for time constraints. Let's quickly go over to group two, um, agile leadership. Um, I think Barbara was in that group, and um, Erin and um, Tolu. So let's hear from you. Over to you. All right. Um, thank you very much, Yeshua. Um, I'll just. Just because of what happened in the group, um, the first um, group, 
I would like to say something. I would like to give you a background story of our, our case study. So Aisha owns an elite financial institution where because of the COVID-19, they all don't go to work any longer. But um, because I think, um, and so the employees no longer come into the office, but, um, and so they have an extra time to work. But she is obviously expecting the employees to work continually, no spending time with the other, which obviously was not getting done with the employees. And she, instead of doing, listening to them, she is actually telling them that she, they won't get any job if she decides to let them go. Now also, Aisha does not have a digitized office, meaning that they, are, they have a lot of paperwork. So if they need to work, they have to go to the office once a week to get whatever they need to do for the, uh, for the work for the rest of the week. Then also, there was no official call, there was no group calling, and so everybody were doing, so sometimes the tasks have been um, done multiple times, and so we're asked to come up with seven strategy. But in our group, or like group one, who had 10, <laughs> we didn't have, we had about three, four. So the first one strategy we said was communication. No, I'll start with empathy. That um, Aisha needs to listen more to, it, to our employees, feel and appreciate and a sense of belonging. Celebrate the team's current and past successes. We also said communication is one of the key things. Group calls via WhatsApp, Zoom calls and um, video calls. Aisha should also reach out to our clients, ask them how they can restructure, what are their needs and assist our clients that way. Brainstorming with the staff was important as well. She needs to find a way of communicating with her staff. Then also collaboration. We also mentioned the improved efficiency. True, there's an app cultural where to keep track of what tax has been completed. Aisha should also um, explore inexpensive online collaboration platforms like Slack for the sake of our business and our employees. Most software developers, developers give a trial period and Aisha can sample multiple platforms so that they can. And I think finally, we, we added the um, having to engage both the employer and the employee to make sure that they can have productivity because, of, because we are dealing with digital, you are not sure that you are saying something, you need to make sure that there's an engagement so that you can make sure you have productivity. I shall need to do that and make sure that there's engagement and productivity at the same time because they're two different things. That's it. Thank you very, very much, Tolu. That was also very, very good. I and a round of applause for also for the ladies in group two. Um, agile leadership. That's that's very that's also very very fantastic. That's that's fantastic. Just one funny thing by the side. When we're developing these case studies, um, the um, uh, Chaelin, uh, who is our regional uh, support intern, and Erin, uh, who is our my intern for Nigeria, have worked on these case studies. After we built them, so they now came back and say they think the solution to this, these two cases. Is if Yemi employs Aisha? Because she needs an employer. Yeah, you're right. She, she she like an yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Yemi should employ Aisha, and I was like, hey, this is a hypothetical case. This is not real life. But um, <laughs> so that's what I love that. That's fantastic. So I'd like to open the open the floor over to. Do we have any questions, observations, and feedback? Hello, this is Colette from Johannesburg. Hello, Colette. Hi, hi everyone. Hi. Um, I just wanted to, to mention something that's happening with a lot of uh, bigger uh, companies here in South Africa, especially those that have departments that cannot work from home. So, you know, they can't send their whole teams home during uh, the COVID lockdown and just say, you know, work on your laptop and be available on your cell phone. So, um, and companies that um, are applying this particular um, measure would be, you know, those that have call centers. Um, so I, I'm aware of a couple of clients of mine who have actually decided that they um, would put all of their call center employees on reduced hours. 
So in other words, they would each work three weeks out of four in a month and then have one week off. So it basically means that, um, you know, the company is, is being able to, to still staff their call center, although it'll probably be busier for the people on duty. They're also able to reduce their salary bill on a monthly basis for as long as lockdown continues. Um, and, the, and thirdly, although it is reduced um, wages for the people who are working, it does ensure that no one is, no one is going to be losing their job. So it's just a way that, um, yeah, that, that everybody kind of uh, contributes a little bit and then it saves everyone's job in, in the medium to long term. So I just thought I would share that with you. Thank you very, very much, Colette. I think that's fantastic. Um, Tolu, since you, you anchored that uh, section, what do you think of Colette's um, um, input? Yeah, I think it's fantastic, actually, because it's, it's a win-win. The um, employees don't need to come to work throughout the month, and the, the employer also would get a cut <laughs> during the salary. So I think this is good. <laughs> it's a win-win. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic suggestion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, everyone, for being part of this. Um, Patricia, we, we're about to round up. I, I thought we should have Barbara and um, Smita uh, say a few closing words as we round up. And then, uh, Patricia, I will also like you to like round us up. Barbara and Smita. So, Barbara and Smita. Smita, do you want to go first? Um, okay. <laughs> so, I think just to round up, just on both the case studies and also just from our presentation, I think the most important um, tool that we have and it's and it's freely available to us is our communication and our empathy. Um, you know, and you can use it for your customers, your employees, um, you know, your suppliers, like we discuss in our case study, um, the banks, et cetera. As long as you have that communication, the open communication, and you're confident to have that communication, I think that's key to any success, um, be it internal or external. I think that's my last words, Barbara, you. <laughs> No, I fully agree with you. Um, I think from my side, and, and Yeshua, maybe you want to close your ears now. <laughs> but um, I think the other thing is, I think it has been proven so many times that females are actually incredibly strong in terms of dealing with ambiguity. And what we are in at the moment is this ambiguous situation. We don't know. We can't clearly say in six months' time we're going to be here or in three months' time we're going to be there. So I think just to harness that because I think we, you know, it, it I think it is a strength. It's not necessarily always easy for everybody, but I think in it with, with agility as well, you know, I'm a big believer that any business problem or any problem for employees can be solved. If you, if you don't have a solution yet, maybe you've just not spoken to the right people. So I think it's also that, that, that communication um, that needs to be maintained and to feel comfortable in a way that it is going to be uncomfortable for the next couple of months and maybe exactly where you are now might not be where you need to be in three months time or six months time. Um, and I think that's, you know, to have a clear vision of where we want to be maybe next year, but at the same time, not to get too, too lost in the detail, the everyday detail. Um, I think that's the, that's the other piece, but I think this, the, this ambiguous situation that we are in at the moment you know, you've got to control the parts in it that you can control. Um, you know, I think that's that's the key thing and not to try and do everything on your own. I think that's the other thing, you know, you as a leader also need to be able to rely on other people to prop you up and that you work as a team. Okay. Thank you very much, very, very much, Barbara. And thank you also very much, Asmita. I will um, thank you very much for the time you've taken and the wealth of knowledge experience and the expertise you have shared with us. We hope that we'll be able to schedule something like this in, uh, in the very near future. Thank you very, very much. Um, um, Patricia, I will leave you to bring wind us down. Okay, um, uh, thank you, Yeshua. And thank you for um, 
your leadership on this webinar. I also want to obviously thank Barbara and Smita of AstraZeneca who provided us amazing content and advice. And we really do look forward to continuing to work with you. At exactly the same time, there was a, 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 an AstraZeneca webinar in Brazil happening exactly the same time. And as Barbara pointed out, there's so much uh, wisdom and knowledge in the South um, that can be shared um, across many countries. So we have recorded this. It will go on our YouTube channel. Please feel free to um, share it with others. I hope that you had a chance to meet each other um, and um, we can, um, and uh, maybe even you could do some private chats with each other. Certainly you should feel free to. Um, this is a continuing webinar series. We call it the Amazon Mindset Amazon Mindset webinar series. Um, and there will be more coming both from South Africa and from Nigeria. I want to acknowledge our South African compatriots from WeConnect, uh, Jean Shawapiwa, um, and I believe Vanessa was on as well. Um, and I know they were active um, earlier. Um, and um, I think that that's probably enough for now. Um, and we look forward to seeing you at the next event. Thank you again. Thanks very much, everyone. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Yeshua. Bye. Thank, Thank you, Yeshua, for the invitation Bye. always. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to our Weeby leaders, Tulu and Fenmi. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Bye. 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 Good meeting.